Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Holistic Health Coach and author of You Can Afford to Be Healthy. And this podcast looks at a holistic approach to health from a multi-generational and multinational perspective of women of color. All right, so today we're talking about um, what to do when you're tired of smoothies for breakfast. <laughs> Um, I don't know, like, what do people eat for breakfast normally? I mean, I know growing up, I've, I basically just had oatmeal and that was the staple every morning. I don't remember having the conversation, I'm bored with breakfast. It's it just oatmeal you had. You had oatmeal and sometimes you had porridge, cornmeal porridge. And then <laughs> sometimes you have the cereal from the box. Oh yeah, and box I, cereal. I remember very well. Mm-hmm. And you used to have your favorite cereal, but we, we passed that now. That's behind us. Yeah, I had I had honey nut cereals and frosted flakes. We I don't think. do box cereal no more. Right. That's out of the door. So basically, let's say I had four different breakfasts and it switched up. Okay, so then I didn't have the conversation. Do you have like a series of breakfast options that you rotate through so you don't get bored? Yeah. Um, because I don't, I'm not afraid of my kitchen. So in my situation, it's a little different. Um, take for example, um, this morning I had a bowl of freshly fixed oatmeal with banana and strawberry. Um, what kind of oatmeal you use? Uh, the, the, this morning I use the uh, old fashioned, but yesterday morning I had the steel cut oats. But let's say tomorrow I want to switch up. You know, I do the vegan pancakes. How you and make your, how you make your pancakes? I use Dr. Mills oatmeal flour or I use um, buckwheat flour or sometimes I use um, almond flour. Um, and I just use a little baking powder and sometimes I put flaxseed in it, but it make it hard. The flaxseed make the pancake hard. And another thing too, when I don't want to go through those things for breakfast, well, you know, my biggest breakfast is my bowl of salad in the morning, which I enjoy very much. And um, I have the salad with toast. Uh, I think that the bread is like 15 gram bread, that kind of bread. It's, it's pretty expensive. Anybody would know it is like in a green package. It's you one mean of the, the 15 seed? 15 seeds, sorry, not grams, seeds. It's one of the most expensive bread you might see on the shelf. That's the one I use, but I don't do bread every day. I switch it up. And for, for, for folks who want to try this, and it's very, very, very healthy, very nice. I am a banana bread person. And my banana bread ingredients is, consists of things that you use for breakfast. The only thing you would use for breakfast in that bowl is the, the flour that I use, the whole wheat flour to make the banana bread. But I use banana, flaxseed, nuts, walnuts. I use um, dates to sweeten it with a little maple syrup. I don't use sugar in my banana, you know, because I try different kind and I'm not a person who likes things that's very sweet, but that is nice in the morning if you have whatever hot drink you're having, you have a slice of banana bread. And then, you know, because if, if you're home and you don't have to go until, you know, if you're a person who go to work later or if you're a homebody person, you don't have to have heavy breakfast because by 11 after you have that little slice of bread with whatever hot beverage you drink in the morning to break your fast, by 11 o'clock you're hungry again. So that's a good, that's the time you can, prepare a nice healthy breakfast like a salad you know and have that which is is healthy also but there's many ways you can switch up your breakfast so with your salad what else are you eating like what's in the salad oh my goodness okay where should i begin i like the spring mix 
And I put onions, I love raw onions. I put raw onion, bell pepper, um, radish, and tomato. And sometimes I put little uh, slices of cucumber in there. That's what I have. Yeah, that's it. And that's it? Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I make different kinds of, I'm not a, I'm not a cooker. I don't, I don't like cornmeal porridge. The fact that it can make you put weight on. It's cornmeal porridge is good, but it's good for people who, um, and I cannot get organic cornmeal. So I don't do it very often, but it's for people who had surgery and, and um, you know, they're home recuperating for it. Cornmeal porridge is good for people like that, but I wouldn't. Because it's quick? No, because it make you put weight on, it's it fattening. But why would you want that after surgery? Because some people after surgery, they need to get some weight on because they um they lose a lot of weight and they're recuperating. But it make you heal faster. The cornmeal make you heal faster. There's something in the cornmeal. I never really mm -hmm. studied, but what I that's what I heard from a child growing up. So I don't know how true that is. You know, I'm not true to it. Mm, that's interesting. I'm gonna research that. It's something I know, Sam. I know you research everything. That's good. I've but never it's heard that. Okay. Because I always hear my parents um, talk about cornmeal for healing. You can also use cornmeal and make poultry to pull infection out your, wherever you have the infection. You tie it on and it pulls it out. And mm -hmm. I've seen it happen. But um, back to the breakfast. Yeah, as I said, there's so much. And, and as, as a Jamaican and a West Indian, we also have green boiled banana for breakfast. It's a good source of iron, and you can also have it with your spinach. It's very nice with spinach. Um, what else we do for breakfast? Oh, we you and I. I sometimes do the ear ear fried uh, ripe plantain and make sandwich with it. Mm -hmm. Just pack it on the, the 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 toast and make sandwich, and that's breakfast. The so plantain. Then, so you put plants in between bread. I make bread, yes. Mm. It's a sandwich. You see, there's some, just like how you put ripe banana between bread with peanut butter or almond bit, butter and apple. Just the same way. Huh? As a matter of fact, sometimes I have that for breakfast too. So, you know, your breakfast is not boring because you don't have to get up every day and eat the same thing. There's just so much different things you can eat, you know? Mm -hmm. So much, and, and um, uh baking is interesting because there's just so much things you could bake for breakfast like like what you can you can bake um patties vegetable patties so you eat vegetable patties for breakfast when i bake them yeah but you see i have time now but for people who's on the run that's like a different thing yeah yeah i have time and i don't want to be selfish because i know it's not everybody retired more retired <laughs> Nice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to my. <laughs> yeah, so I on the on the blog, there's gonna be a link in the show notes of a list of recommendations and ideas of all the different breakfast options if you don't want to do a smoothie. I personally like smoothies because they're really quick. When I wake up in the morning. I'm hungry and I'm working like my the morning time my mind is so fresh and full of ideas and I I find it's my most creative and productive time so I don't really like to spend too much time thinking about what I'm going to eat and so my smoothies my go to I just make sure I have all my ingredients stocked so I have my fruit basket and I make sure it's stocked with bananas because that's a staple um, with some kind of fruit. So right now there's a lot of oranges in season. And so I'm using that in my smoothies. I'll usually do two bananas, two oranges, and two dates um, and a tablespoon of almond butter because uh, I wasn't doing almond butter or nut butters for a while. So now I'm back on that and it's really great. Um, now what's good in your smoothie too? Merengue. Merengue. Oh. So yeah. I'm using now uh, maca, a teaspoon of maca and uh, pumpkin pie spice, which it has clove and nutmeg and cinnamon. So it, you know, so that's the, that's the spice of the season for me right now that I've been using. 
Um, and I just rotate it. So, and I'll, I'll put greens in there also. So before I had kale, I had mixed greens. Now I have romaine in the fridge. And so I'm putting romaine in there, but I always have some kind of greens and I rotate the greens. I rotate the fruits. Um, almond butter is what I like. So I kind of stick with that. And of course the spice is going to change. Sometimes I use fresh ginger. Sometimes I use fresh turmeric root, you know, depending on what's available. And no, so, that's because, yeah, because I switch that up, you know, I'm not, I'm not having the same flavor all the time, but I am having a smoothie pretty consistently. Now, if I have bananas and none of them are ripe, then I might have something different. Like I'll have, like you, you were talking about savory dishes because there's no rule that your breakfast needs to be sweet. However, I um, like to front load my day with fruit because I can't have fruit later in the day because digestively it just doesn't work, you know, to have like a smoothie, you know, um, and I know I'm going to want the, the smoothie just packs a lot of, um, you know, a, just enough sweetness to satisfy me for the day and it's filling. And, and it so give you, give you a jump start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, without weighing me down. Because like I said, the morning time is like my best time for creativity. So I don't want to be tired and lethargic because of food, because then that's like my day is basically done. You know, I lost the day. Um, so anyway, if I'm not doing the smoothie, then whatever, like you said, I'll do a salad. Um, last week, I had um, the untuna from the Jack jackrabbit or whatever, Jack is it jackrabbit or rabbit hole anyway there's a link on the <laughs> blog i forget the name of the company um but i put that on romaine lettuce with some um bell peppers and I've, i put it in a wrap with a collard leaf wrap um and made wraps with it um and so yeah you know i've done i've done the salad with avocado and seasoned with um a tablespoon of olive oil a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and garlic, onion um, powder, and whatever spices, you know, sometimes curry spice or whatever, I'll season that, you know, salad, mix it up with some a half of avocado slice and, um, and a, a side of sweet potato or something, which people have seen on my social media posts, you know, that's a breakfast. So it's, you know, you, the the limits on it is only what you put on it breakfast is basically breaking a fast right okay. and my preference is to break a fast yeah. with um raw foods with fruit um either juice or smoothie or just what like when i wake up in the morning i'm drinking water and like my water has you know lemon in it um and so that first meal is you know is whatever really you want it to be when I break my fast in the morning with a uh, with 16 ounces of um I boil the water as a matter of fact and I let it cool down a little. I put fresh lemon in the water every morning. Because I think that after you fast all night, there is mucus and all kind of stuff in your stomach. And you need to get that stuff the first thing in the morning. It's like brushing your teeth. You need for that to go down and cleanse your inside. And mm -hmm. it works perfect. It it works like magic for me. Oh, but we're going back to the breakfast thing. They say they have an old time saying that you should eat breakfast like a king. And while you were talking about the smoothie, people who don't like salad, I have a tip for them. Take your salad. Don't season your salad though. Just take your salad, like your spring salad. Make your smoothie with it. Put all the stuff you want in there, except salad dressing. Mm -hmm. And you have a beautiful um breakfast because a lot of people don't like salad yeah so you can use your romaine or whatever you want to use and make a smoothie with it and then you have you don't have to worry you get your salad in yeah my theory on the salad why people don't like it is because um they haven't created it in a way where they could like it so like greens for most people by themselves i'll take a green i don't like right because kale i just love i could just eat it by itself it's just so good but let's say something like spinach, which thank God it's high in oxalates. So I'm not even eating it anymore, <laughs> you know, because high oxalate foods, you know, are bad for the 
they 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 basically hinder the absorption of iodine, which you need for um, right. healthy thyroid function. And you know, grandma had a history with thyroid stuff. So like, you know, I just I feel like you know I'm just you know limiting spinach, and I'm okay with actually just not having it right now. Um, but spinach, you know, because like because it's my least favorite green spinach um you know i this is basically how i started in the beginning because i didn't like vegetables i would put it in a smoothie with fruits and stuff that i like but when you're making a salad like with spinach i would do a dressing that is really good so like tahini and we did an episode on this on some great salad dressings um which i'll link in the show notes like using tahini as a base or you could even use almond butter as a base with some different seasonings and spices um you could even do uh, a buffalo if you like um they have this thing in the in the restaurants this uh buffalo cauliflower right mm-hmm. so they have the buffalo cauliflower i've seen buffalo cauliflower wraps you can do a, a buffalo sauce with you know, on, on cauliflower, put that on your bed of greens and you like the flavor of the buffalo sauce, right? And it's on these vegetables. And so it makes it taste good, which is why I dress, I dress my salad with apple cider vinegar because I love it. Apple cider vinegar, olive oil, and the spices that I mentioned, because it makes it taste good. It's like, it's, it's a seasoned meal and you want to make sure you add enough stuff to it so you feel satisfied. So that's where the sweet potato comes in or the plantain that you make in the air fryer or, um, you know, having something more substantial like the, if you're going to do, because I, I am making um, either today or tomorrow, uh, buff, uh, Brussels sprouts with buffalo sauce. Because I'm not really a fan of cauliflower. The buffalo cauliflower I've had at like restaurants in the the health food store, they, they have ready-made food. It's like they, they, they fry it. So they put stuff on it and they fry it. And basically what you're eating is like the cauliflower has gone through enough denaturing where you're no longer really tasting cauliflower. You're basically eating the skin of it and it tastes great. Right. But Brussels sprouts, I love, right. Um, so I figure, okay, let me try this. And so that's what I'm going to try. And I'm going to put it on a bed of greens and that's enough. You know, I know for me that that's going to be sufficient, but I also got Japanese sweet potato because that's my favorite. And I haven't had sweet potato. I feel like in months or Chinese Japanese. Oh, I just had, a, I just had, um, three slices for snack a while ago and some, um, what do you call that? Um, that tea we drink. Hibiscus hibiscus but it's a sorry light drink uh, it was, yeah because yeah. it was a was about lunchtime so that's how light lunch is because i had my big bowl of cereal for breakfast mm-hmm. with the um but in, you know your breakfast meals can be whatever you choose to have for breakfast because you can have you can have your dinner for breakfast for people who don't know it and it's the best time this way you'll you'll eat your last meal in the evening can be like a pauper you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. whether it's whether you know whatever just a light snack yeah this i'm gonna i'm gonna just say that you know if you are going the high raw way um you you really want to make sure you get your fruits in the beginning of the day so even doing a fruit bowl, which I didn't even add to my list of recommendations, but that is also another option. Like it, you're, it doesn't always have to be a smoothie. You can just actually just have whole fruit, mono meal, you know, and just eat. <laughs> oh, one of, the, one of the, the, the recipe that you had given me for raw breakfast, which is fruits, was the one with the, um, the pear and the and the nut. I'm trying yeah, to remember. Yeah, the raw vegan oatmeal. A raw, that one is so delicious. Yes. You know? That recipe I, is in the self-care food. salon. So for folks who, who want that and who are looking for a whole year's worth of raw food meal plans and shopping lists and recipes, they could find that in there. Right. Yes. Yeah. And there's a link in the show notes to that. So I knew people who really go in raw want to get their fruits in. A fruit bowl in the morning is nice because fruits can really fill you up. 
And some people can't do too much citrus. I'm a citrus person. I can have a whole bowl of citrus and, you know, but, you know, there's other fruits like blueberries with strawberry and banana make a beautiful breakfast by itself. Mm -hmm. Just put it in a bowl because I eat that too. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I never feel like breakfast is boring. Not for me. Because you can change it up. You get up every day, you can have something different. Yeah. 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 And when blueberries are, you know, affordable in season and abundance, that will usually be my whole breakfast. I've had whole breakfast of just a whole pint of blueberries or a whole like big plate of grapes, you know, however much is in the bag or cherries. When cherries are in season, I just mono meal on cherries for breakfast. Um, I know you I what? You cut off. I said you're a blueberry person. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, and so, yeah, so there's just so much, as long as there's fruits and vegetables, you know, you can't really run out of options. I mean, I just don't, I don't see you getting bored because I've been hearing a lot about this boredom situation. And I feel like if you get bored with all of this and even the stuff you're doing, like you decided to put plantains in between bread. Like I would never think to do that. Yeah, but you have to you're like, in order to enjoy your food, you have to be creative with it. Yeah. Creativity is one of the, the one of the most important steps in life, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you know, like for me, I don't have um, breads, uh, wheats and things because, you know, my system doesn't oh, like that. Huh? How about breadfruit? Well, yeah, and breadfruit is, is completely different than actual bread. So... Bread. Unfortunately, over here in in um, LA, I don't really have access to that. Unfortunately, but um, the 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 point I was making is that you know some would say maybe I'm limited or whatever, but this is a choice, right? Like if I if I eat even steel cut oats, which I think I said on the podcast before, steel cut oats, you know, I don't gain weight. Regular oats, I gain weight. Steel cut oats, I don't gain weight, but I still have digestive issues with it. Um, however, there's even with that exclusion, there's all of these options. So it's just a matter of, of choice. Like, do you want to deal with the consequences of things that you used to eat and you used to enjoy, or would you rather just embrace the vast options you know, that your body actually agrees with, you know? Do you recommend, um, do you recommend apple cider vinegar? Yeah. So, um, the guy, Anthony Williams, we were talking about him before and he was saying apple cider vinegar is no good because, and I'm forgetting now even the reason, right? And so I didn't have it while I was experimenting on my body with the no fats and, you know, just deep cleansing, whatever, but there is a lot of research to show that if you are looking for weight loss, it's very beneficial, but it has all these other benefits. But I know a lot of people who, um, are, who listen to the podcast are interested in weight loss, right? So, um, but what I don't do is drink it, <laughs> all right, you know? This is, this is what I want to say to you. Yeah. You were talking about the digestive problem. But I think if people who suffer with digestive problem could just, when they start having problem with even bloatness or your stomach don't feel good after they eat, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar into a cup of warm water and just drink it down. Yeah. That can, it, it helps. I mean, that could work, but the issue is that you're talking about um, squashing a symptom after the fact as opposed to going to the root of the issue. So if you are eating foods that is causing diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, gas and bloating, you do that on a consistent basis, what you're doing is irritating the intestinal lining, which will compromise your immune system, it will make your body less able to absorb the nutrients from the foods that you're eating if you continue to do this long term. Now, if you want to build a strong immune system, um, and have strong digestion, you want to eliminate those inflammatory foods. So for 
like you're let's say you don't have any issues with oatmeal it's not inflammatory for you but for some people it is you know Mm -hmm. so that's why we talk about in the program bioavailability and bioindividuality all of us are different Different. um so what the diet that's going to work for you may not work for me vice versa and so you your body is going to tell you what you should be eating and what you shouldn't be eating and don't look at it like um restrictive because it's not there's just so many options if you want to see it right Right. and so for you you know I'm sure your breakfast used to look a lot different before you cleaned up right but now you're even you're coming up with new ideas no one's doing you know (laughs) because yeah because I used to have toast and cheese with what did I used to put with the cheese tomato yeah I used to cheese and tomato but um, when I stopped eating their product and I went and I get cheese and I tried it, it still tastes good, but there's something about the cheese that freaks me out. I just feel like just the word cheese, <laughs> it reminds me of what mess up cholesterol, whether it's vegan cheese or just the word cheese, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't really mess with cheese. I don't, you know. Yeah. 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 So sky's the limit, lots of options and um, embrace, embrace the lifestyle with um, vigor, opportunity, exploration. You know, a lot of times I get ideas um, when I go out. So like even in the, you know, traveling um, and I, I remember being in the airport and um, was, I went to like this, one of the food places they had there And it was probably a breakfast time, you know, that I was there because one of the options on the board was um, a uh, almond butter on toast with banana, like you're talking about. And they, they drizzled like honey on it or something like that. It was probably like their only vegan dish or something. And it was an interesting idea. So I was like, okay, what would this look like with agave? And it just had me starting to think about things, right? Um, Which I ultimately didn't really end up doing it because I can't really do bread. And, um, but the, the, the concept, it just gave me an idea. And I see how you are just flowing with things. And um, even this, this dish that I'm making with Brussels sprouts and Buffalo sauce and the um, Japanese sweet potato, that idea came from air one. When I visited air one, what I usually like to eat there. So I'm like, let me try and make my version, you know? So, well, you know, uh, my book helped me. It's not like I just come up with ideas by myself. I have a 10 talent uh, cookbook that I use and it only deal with plant-based stuff. And it helps a lot, you know, different mm-hmm. types of tea and um, uh, it helps. Um, so it's not everything out of my own, you know, but I do create some things out of my head because I figure, okay, if you, if you can eat this piece of planting, what can you eat planting with? And that's why you play around with food. You, you don't have to just eat the planting by itself. Planting can taste good with, planting is nice in salad, you know? Yes. Starches so, and vegetables go very well together. Very nice with salad. So that's why I said, like I was listening to you talking about the salad dressing. Sometimes my salad is already dressed up, so I don't have to pour anything on it. Because your planting is seasoned. Exactly. If my planting give it taste, Yeah. you know? It might not be savory, it might be sweet, but it's a taste. Yeah. But if I had sweet uh, salad today, tomorrow I might have one very savory. You know, so if you change up your... Yeah, and and the more you eat this way, the more vegetables you eat, the more fruits you eat, this is what your body ends up craving, right? As opposed to like the cereal because I'm I will tell you I was really stuck on those like (laughs) the cereal and I don't I'm not even like a sugar lover but it's just like that's a part of my childhood the warm milk you know even when I was doing plant-based milks um with the with the cereals even the healthier and that's why I tell people like if you had if you were stuck on something like let's say frosted flakes and they have a healthier version yeah. Um, like ancient harvest or something like that it has a sweet flavor. The milk has a sweet flavor, but it's not frosted flakes with high fructose corn syrup. 
use that to transition. You know, you're, you're moving in the right direction. It's a lot cleaner because eventually you'll get to the place where you can completely wean off of box cereals, you know? Yeah, because I used to love Kashi, you know, Kashi cereal. Mm -hmm. But I find them too sweet. Too much sugar in there because even sometimes you want to have like a little snack or something, you know, you say, okay, if you have little cereal in those, you, you can't just snack in it because I used to eat it dry. But it's just so much sugar in there that it scares me. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I recommend for people to have for breakfast because it, the, the sugar just killed your energy right there. It's not the good type of uh, sweetener, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My refined sugar for me is a complete downer. Like I, my brain no longer works productivity right into the ground. Like it just, so, um, and I, I actually put post-it notes on the wall. Like you cannot handle refined sugar. <laughs> this is me coaching myself. Like you cannot handle because I was just feeling the effects. And I remember, like I said, um, I think it was last year on a podcast, how much I love so delicious ice cream. I would love to work for them because they're, they're just, their their ice creams are so good. Right. And they are really good, but I can't, my, my body can no longer handle. And I, and I don't feel the need for ice cream. Me too. Cause you asked me about that too. I don't, I, I used to love ice cream three o'clock in the morning. I remember of it in the fridge. I'll eat it. <laughs> I went to I bought vegan ice cream. Oh, that thing is so sweet. I say, you know, forget it. I don't need to have this. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't do ice cream. Too sweet. Too much sugar. I, I think you see after you cut sugar out your diet for a while, it's hard for you to, you know, like when I baked the last um the last banana bread I made, I used dates. And I just figured the dates alone will make it sweet enough, so I used some um maple syrup with it well i think maple syrup is still sugar that's just how i feel but i didn't use a lot you know and it's a big bread and but i know bananas are sweet so with the banana and the um and the the, the dates and the maple syrup it tastes pretty good and i know it's healthy mm -hmm. yeah because it made with flaxseed and all the other good stuff in there so i know that's healthy yeah but for those people who listen and wonder what they could bake to make them last them a whole week a nice banana bread Yes, that's the trend right now, apparently. <laughs> Banana bread. It's the trend, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Do you have any closing words? Oh, um, on this journey, just stay physical. Stay physical in everything that you do. Even when you're preparing your breakfast, dance. That's a nice way to be in the kitchen. Even if somebody laughs at you, just dance. Just move around and do your thing, you know, stay active, stay physical, laugh sometimes. Laughing yeah. can be up too, you know, laughing don't make you hungry. 